In our last episode, we rescued Polly from Golly Mine. Well, that is, we rescued the head of Polly from Golly Mine. She and her adoptive human brother, Saul, had been attacked by Scorched, and the battle left her nothing more than a talking head. After rescuing her and returning the head back to the wayward, Duchess asked us to find Polly a new robot body. Saul said that he knew of a pristine Assaultron body inside the ruins of a pre-war robotics shop in the town of Summersville, a shop called Duncan and Duncan. So heading to Summersville, we can try to find this pre-war robotics shop. When we arrive, we see that things have changed a bit. We find new graffiti on the walls of these ruins. Graffiti we've never seen before. Crimson red wings outspread with a black rib cage painted on top of them. And soon we learn why. I saw someone in the middle of town and I went up to have a chat. Still alive. How am I still alive? I am your god now! <laughs> Only to be attacked. Summersville is now overrun by a brand new raider gang, the Blood Eagles. The Blood Eagles are unrelated to the free radicals at the West Virginia Lumber Company. No, the Blood Eagles are always hostile to absolutely everybody. They all appear to be hopped up on drugs. And so before we can find this robotic store, we've got to clear the Blood Eagles. If this is our first time to the town of Summersville, we start a miscellaneous quest to find and activate the jukeboxes of Summersville to bring music back to the town. There are three jukeboxes in total, one in the ruins of a building that was used for voting before the bombs dropped. It's on the eastern side of town, the side of town where we'll likely arrive. We learn more about the voting that was going on here by reading a voting flyer on a table by some voting tents. New voting is as easy as one, two, three. One, collect a ballot from an active ballot printer. Two, Mark it with your preferred candidate. Three, drop it in, a vote counter. Please don't grab more than one ballot. That would be voter fraud. Oh, so it looks like voter fraud in Appalachia was prevented with a simple, please, airtight solution. Another is in a pre-war laundromat. We can easily access it by walking through a big broken wall next to a playground. And the final one in the ruins of a pre-war diner. We find it in the corner of the eating area. Once done, we can enter Duncan and Duncan, and we see that this robotic shop has been largely ignored by the Blood Eagles. We find scrap wood and broken containers leaning against the door. When ready, we can enter Duncan and Duncan Robotics. We arrive in an entryway before a locked door. Thankfully, Saul had a key card, allowing us access to this door. Opening the door, we enter reception. We see a Mr. Handy on display behind us and a skill level zero locked door to the west. But instead of picking this lock, we can head through the open double doors to the primary display floor. We find the shop still run by a robot Mr. Handy named Skinner. Oh. Well now, what do we have here? Are you another ghost? I cannot bring you the peace you require, spirit. Leave me be. Got a couple screws loose, eh, pal? You have no idea. Well, what can I do for you, spirit? I'm Skinner, by the by, at your service. I am a customer, not a ghost. <sighs> Must we, spirit? Oh, so be it. Welcome to Duncan and Duncan's, Appalachia's premier robotics dealer. I am Skinner. How may I help you, alleged member of the living? Silence! I am the ghost of Appalachia Future, and I have a demand. Hmm, so I thought. No need to put on airs with me. I understand your plight, spirit. My name's Skinner. And I am trapped in here, much like you are trapped in undeath. Now, 
What do you require to leave me alone? Trapped? You aren't able to leave? It should be open now. <laughs> my duty is myself, spirit. Trapped behind this counter until I finally fade from this world. <sighs> Someday, but I digress. What can I do for you? This spirit requires a host and a Soltron body. Well, spirit, unfortunately, a Soltrons are military-grade hardware. As such, all of our machines have already been spoken for. Outstanding deal with the United States military just waiting for pickup. You understand. We find a number of options, we can say. Any other pristine frames you've got for sale? Uh, not for purchase, no. The mint condition Protectron and handy bodies we have on the premises have been spoken for. And our resupplier is already desperately late with our latest shipment. I do hope you understand. Come on. You're a businessman. I'm a businessman or woman. How much do you want? I'm sorry, but I simply cannot. The price of such a machine, even before its noted uptick in demand, was in the millions of dollars. I've got news for you. No one uses dollars anymore. People use caps. Bottle caps? Actual trash? Hmm. Then it's likely safe to presume the amount you'd need to offer is in the mid-ten figures. We can pass a charisma check of three to say... Caps are much more valuable. Easily 10 million to one. But I'll cut you a deal. I'll give you one whole cap for the body. Is that so? Mr. Duncan are so very risk averse. Uh, fine. Here, you may collect it upstairs. <laughs> Fool. Or if we've completed the primary quest in the game, during the course of which we actually become a United States military general, we find an option to say, the Assaultrons are for the military, eh? General Oxhorn, at your service. I'm here to collect said Assaultron. Oh, I wish you'd said so sooner. Deepest apologies, General. Here you are, the frames upstairs. Either of those two options grant us the key card to the Assaultron showroom. Or we can say, How dare you! I am the ghost of Duncan himself! You will give me this robot! You? You're a Duncan? Hmm. I perhaps see some distant resemblance, spirit. But, Mr. Duncan, why, they tan my hide if I gave away an Assaultron. Here, you may take the Protectron. You can find it in the adjacent room. It was slated for one of the lesser clans in the region. The Garahans, or some such. Mr. Duncan, I'm sure, would be thrilled to keep it in the family. In which case, he gives us the access card to the Protectron showroom. Well, I've got to go. By all means. The Protectron showroom is the door immediately to our left. This is the same room we could have accessed by picking the skill level zero locked door that we found at the entrance. However, without permission, we find the Protectron body guarded by laser trip wires. And unless we have the appropriate perks, we can't disarm them. And if we trigger the trap, Beginning search. Ceiling mounted turrets. In this room, we find a Protectron model on a countertop. And against the western wall, we find another skill level zero locked door. This leads to a scrap storage room where we find a lot of ruined robot parts, none of which we can use. But lying on a shelf back here, we find the Mr. Handy showroom key. We see another door at the end of this room that leads behind the counter where we found Skinner. And looking up, we see a hole in the ceiling that leads to a room above. Heading back to the Protectron showroom, if we activate the Protectron in the middle of this room, we learn that the body seems to be in pristine condition. We could attach the transmitter to it, though we're not sure how Polly would react to getting this body. We'll back out for now and see what else we can find. 
Now, Skinner mentioned that the Assaultron body was upstairs, so moving behind the counter, we pass a door that led to the storage room. We could have opened this to sneak behind Skinner instead of passing dialogue at a staircase leading up to the top floor. This leads to the Mr. Handy Robot showroom, which we can either open using a key card that we got from Skinner via dialogue, or using the keys we found in the storage room next to the Protectron showroom. Inside, we find a pristine Mr. Handy body being guarded by laser trip wires. Against the eastern wall, we find a doorway leading to an office. This must be the office of Duncan and Duncan, the proprietors. Each office space is laid out identically. Each desk has a whiskey bottle, a mug, a newspaper, a phone, and a desktop picture mirroring each other. And on one of the Duncan's desks, we find a note. Read between the lines, James. I changed the code to the Assaultron showroom, James. Eight. You have to make your sales some other way, eight. I've already given you the code, eight. You don't need me, eight. But as you've shown, traipsing around with those goons, eight, you never have eight read between the lines. James, I have. And from here it repeats, over and over again, paragraph after paragraph, the exact same text. What exactly does this mean? Read between the lines? On the wall behind each desk is the painting of a clown. And on the wall by the door, we find two clocks on either side of it, each of which has two eights in the middle of the dial. Then, above the door is a birdhouse, and on the birdhouse, another eight. Eight, 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 eight? What's with all the eights? We find out when we leave the office and turn left. Here we find the Assaultron showroom. And if we got the key card from Skinner downstairs, we can simply use it to open it. However, on the wall to the left of the door, we find a keypad. And if we couldn't get the key card, if for example, we decided to stealth our way up here, we can use the keypad to punch in 88888. Either way, the door opens and inside, we find one remaining pristine Assaultron body. Now, we disabled the laser trip wires guarding the Assaultron body because we had the key card from Skinner. But what if we didn't get it? Even if we opened the door with the code, if we didn't have the perks, how would we get past the tripwire? There's a first aid kit on a bench behind us, a couple of lockers nearby, and a hole in the wall to the south. This leads to a passageway behind this room. Moving back here, we find a hole in the wall. We find that we can reach through this hole to access the pristine Assaultron body. In this way, we can attach the transmitter. But let's see what other options we have. Moving out of the hole in the wall, back into the Assaultron showroom, we find a skill level three locked door against the Western wall. Inside, we find a terminal on a desk next to a box safe and a hole in the floor, leading to a room below. We can pick the skill level two lock on the box safe, and on the desk, we find the Assaultron showroom key. Near to this is a terminal, but all we find on it is turret control. We can activate or deactivate the pre-war security. The hole in the floor leads to the robot part storage room that we found next to the Protectron showroom. We see now how we could have gotten the pristine Assaultron body without passing any of the dialogue checks with Skinner, getting any of the key cards, or solving the 88888 riddle. We can pick the skill level zero lock doors into the Protectron showroom, then pick the skill level zero lock door to the storage room, jump up through the hole in the floor, snag the key from the desk, disable the turrets using the terminal if we want, unlock the door to the Assaultron showroom, go behind the wall, and then attach the transmitter without tripping any of the laser security using the hole behind the Assaultron. But we find yet another path here. Heading out of the Assaultron showroom, if we move north through the Mr. Handy showroom, we find another hole in the wall, but this one has a rubble ramp leading to the attic. In the attic, we find a bunch of boxes and containers that form a path all the way to the back of the attic. Near to the very end, we find a holotape and a note. The holotape is labeled Negotiations. Oh, you've truly done it this time, Jonathan. This numeric obsession of yours will be our ruin. You've reminded me multiple times it's the only house in the city with that number. 
but leveraging our only... You what? Oh, don't be a... Fine. Skinner! I yes, Mr. Duncan. Oh, my brother refuses to continue our discussion without his evening tea. Because he is a petulant child. Do fetch him some so we can be done with this. Mr. Duncan, I hardly mean to be rude, but where exactly would you like me to bring this tea? To my brother, you imbecile. Your brother? At the cemetery? What on earth are you talking about? Go downstairs, make his tea, and bring it to the desk directly in front of you where he is seated. Uh, sir, there's no one there. Well, uh, you, you don't see him? No, sir. Well, that simply won't do. Skinner, fetch my toolkit. You're clearly malfunctioning. Very well, uh, sir. We begin to understand what happened here. One of the Duncan brothers, Jonathan, died. And his brother James became so distraught that he refused to accept it. He then went on to continue to run his business as if his brother was still alive, keeping his desk in exactly the same way, even reprogramming their Mr. Handy when the Mr. Handy had the audacity to notice that Jonathan was dead. Could this reprogramming on the part of James Duncan explain why Skinner believes in ghosts? And near to the holotape is a paper note. Apologies, Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan, I've given a strong dressing down to the men involved in the altercation. I'm terribly sorry about them attempting to serve you the summons meant for your twin and duly hope you can understand the mix-up. Unfortunately, the other Mr. Duncan continues to elude us. Are you sure he's not residing at a different address? Can you at least confirm I have this correct? 88888 Watch Key Street, Charleston. It also seems he's been avoiding your mutual place of business since the lockout occurred, though the men I've had stationed in the neighborhood are having some trouble differentiating you two, as you've well seen. Is there any chance you might be willing to don a small item by which they can differentiate you two? A lapel pin or a rose on your jacket pocket? We at Gramercy and Ulster appreciate your patience in this matter. It is our sincere hope to have your brother found and access restored to your showroom in no time. Sincerely, William Ryan Gramercy Esquire. So they were twins. It was Jonathan who lost the key to the showroom, and apparently James couldn't find it, but Saul somehow got his hands on it, perhaps by robbing the grave of Jonathan. But where then is James? Did James die in the nuclear apocalypse of 2077? Or could he still be out there? If we navigate between the furniture here, at the very end, we find a skill level two locked box safe and a hole in the floor. The hole is directly above the Mr. Handy. And if we kneel down, we can reach it. In this way, we can avoid the pre-war security to attach the transmitter to the pristine Mr. Handy body. In my two gameplays, I put one transmitter on the Mr. Handy and one on the pristine Sultron. This body seems to be in pristine condition. Attaching the transmitter to this body means Polly gets the same frame she's used to. We'll attach the transmitter. On our way out, we can have a passing word with Skinner. If I encounter any damage in those showrooms, you should expect a bill. The Duncan line is an ancient and proud one. Why, there's been a Duncan in this great nation ever since the 1980s. But I'm sure you already knew that. I heard some screaming outside the window. Do the ghosts rule the outside world as well now? General, I do hope you'll accept my apologies about the mix-up. It's so hard to tell rank these days. Well, the screaming outside, I think, can be explained by the blood eagles killing people and taking over the town. And, uh, the nuclear apocalypse. I really hope that's the only evidence of ghosts that Skinner has seen. 
Heading back to the Wayward, we can tell Duchess of our success. Hey! You got one. Signal's coming through loud and clear. You know, I don't throw the word hero around a lot. Come over here and let's discuss, huh? Now, I presume you found something that'll work for someone with my natural charm and gravitas? If we didn't choose the Assaultron body, we find a couple of other options here. We can say, I mean, what's a body, really? It's personality that counts. Well, there's the vote of confidence I was hoping for. Still, beats the hell out of your current address, don't it, doll? Or we can say, your body's a jug of moonshine. You'll take what I got ya. You know, you make a strong argument. I believe I can agree to your terms. I also know you didn't have to stick your neck out for me. I appreciate it. Truly. It's true. You've worked real hard putting things right for us. None of us are going to forget what you've done. But that really just leaves one last topic for us to discuss. Doesn't it? Crane, you ready to listen? I'm just warning you, I can't guarantee you're going to be happy with what I'm about to say. Wait, this treasure is real, right? Yes. At least, well... It's better I walk you through the whole thing at once. You ready to hear it? It's about damn time. Okay. Follow me. So, I've known where Crane is. I know where his treasure is, but, well, there's a problem. Duchess leads us upstairs and takes us to the locked door and the restricted area. Opening the door, we step in to find... Honey, you awake? <sighs> you want to give him a little nudge? It's Crane! And he's... a scorched? Boy! 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 Boy is key! Boy is key! <sighs> That's all he says anymore. Boy is key. Over and over. Jesus, Duchess. That thing's been up here the whole time? That thing is Crane, Solomon. And what exactly would you have liked me to do with him? Put it out of its misery! Those things are killers, Duchess. Polly and I have the scars to prove it. I don't recall yielding the floor to debate here. You agree with me, don't you? I do. There's still a person in there. <sighs> exactly. Okay, fine. But that person is fucking dangerous. And those things, they nearly killed Polly and I once. I can't let that happen to the rest of you. I promise. I'll do it with dignity. But I'm killing this thing if no one else is going to. No. Those things are monsters. Only merciful thing to do is to put it out of its misery. You're not serious. Duchess, please. Let us fix this. None of us here are safe while that thing's alive. Why on earth is he... that in here? I swear, he... it wasn't this bad before. I found him. Just resting on the stoop at an ungodly hour, looking like he got burned. It wasn't until I got his shirt off that I saw the crystals. I thought about bashing his head in with a hammer right then, but... But he... he didn't fight me. He wanted me to tie him up because he didn't want to hurt anybody. No monster would do that. You have to see he was is a person. I'm not sure. Is there a way he can be cured? I... Well, look. I may not have all the information here, but... All I've heard is... Well... No. Once the infection's this far gone... Then so is the person inside. I... I know. But look at how defenseless it is. How could you not shoot that? Excuse me? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to take this seriously. Because this is serious. That thing could escape. That thing could kill us all. Just like they nearly did to Polly and I. 
I I'll take care of it. But you need to let me do this, Duchess. It doesn't really matter. Person or no, they're dangerous. Keeping him here is asking for trouble. <sighs> and dangerous people are what got us into this whole mess in the first place. Exactly, Duchess. Duchess, that person is gone. We have to deal with what's in front of us now. A scorched. I... I know. You're right. I just... I couldn't. Please. Just make it quick. Of course. But what if there's a cure? And who knows how long that'll take? We just wait around for this thing to get loose in the hopes that someone out there finds it? No. I'm sorry, but Crane's gone. The only decision to make here... is are you doing it? Or am I? At this point, we find three options, and I was only able to choose two of them. We can kill Crane ourselves, or we can ask Saul to do it. <sighs> All right. Sorry, pal. You two mind if we just take a moment? Of course not, Duchess. <sighs> <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> now, Crane had a map and an access card he kept on him. You want to grab those, doll? If Crane dies on his body, we find the Robco Experimental Cash Key and Crane's map. Or we can say, no, you're talking about murder here. Is that what you want to be? Murderers? Murder? Uh, no, you... <sighs> You're right, I guess. Well, what about... We'll let him go. He's out of our hair and gets a fighting chance at a life. Who knows? Uh, maybe he'll last long enough for someone to find a cure. All right? Maybe he gets lucky. Be a nice change for you, wouldn't it, Mr. Crane? Fine. We'll let him go. I'll take care of the arrangements. Get him far, far away from here. In the interim, honey, you're gonna need to reach into Crane's pocket there and grab a map and a keycard. Just try not to get bit. If we choose this option, we spare Crane's life, but we can still take the keycard and the map from Crane. Bye. According to that map, the treasure is in some kind of special cache tucked away inside Golly Mine, sealed away behind a keycard locked door. Golly Mine? That's where Polly and I tracked the Scorched. Son of a... Does that... Did you lure those damn things here when you found the cache? If Crane died... Suppose we don't need to feel so bad anymore. Solomon, too damn soon. Sorry. If Crane lived... You sure you still want to let him go? Hush, Solomon. Now, this cache. I tried to check it out myself, but I didn't get real far. You're already intimately acquainted with Golly, so I suspect you've got the best shot at actually laying hands on whatever's in there. So, here are my terms. I will let you keep said map and access card. No strings attached as payment for everything you've done for us. But I need your word you'll come back and buy a drink every now and then. And none of that cheap stuff I serve to the scrappers and Saul. Hey. I'm just realizing that having the right people in your life is more important than chasing riches. Why don't we split the treasure? Honey, I'll take it in tips. You're still gonna make me pay for drinks? You bet your ass I am. I have big plans to bilk our new resident treasure hunter for every cap she's got. Now, there anything else you want to discuss before heading out? Any clue what boy is key means? Did Crane have kids? No idea, sweetheart. He was only ever here alone. If he did have kids, well, they're long gone. Hey, Duchess, you need to talk? Like, about Crane? I'll be fine. This 
This is just the world we got now. A lesson I keep seeming to forget. Lucky for me, I just happen to have access to a variety of mind-altering substances. So, I'll bounce back. But thank you for asking. How did you know that Crane had the map and card on him? Maybe I have great vision. Maybe he wore shirts with too many buttons undone. Maybe. You don't need an answer to that question. You got what you needed. What say you let a lady maintain her air of mystery? I think I'm good. Wish me luck. Good luck. Taking a look at the map, we see that it's a map of Golly Mine. We see the mine entrance where we arrived. A number of places that Crane had X'd out. Looks like he tried to find the treasure there. But then one spot circled with arrows and exclamation marks. And here he gives us the cage code. 071990. The same cage code we found on the bulletin board inside Golly Mine. That must mean that the Robco key card we got from Crane opens the sealed door that we found in our last episode. Now we need to head back to Golly Mine to find out exactly what's behind that door. And we're left with a few questions. What did Crane mean when he said, Boy is key? Could this treasure that everyone is hunting for really be behind the door in the depths of Golly Mine? What will Polly say when she discovers the body that we chose for her? If we let Crane live, will we ever see him again? And if we find the treasure, and we promised it to the Free Radicals, how will that play out? Sadly, I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't make these videos without your help. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.